Hello, and welcome to today's Camp Pencil Point. Today, we are doing everything in NPR style. We've got a lot of lettuce. Lettuce. Today, we will be drawing your suggestion that we receive from the internet. Launchpad the quack. So get ready, and we are going to start the show. <clears throat> well, hello there. How do you do? This is Camp Pencil Point, and my name is Drew. So sharpen your pencils, and we'll start the show. Oily McDuck. And now it's time for the harmonica intro. Interesting. Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, otters and dragons and octopi, my name is Joe Fu. I am the director here at Camp Pencil Point. I'm joined by my two very good friends, Drew T. Dractopus, and a special guest appearance by Chef Miker. Thank you for that lovely, very mellow, NPR-style intro. More importantly, I am joined by you, the Camp Pencil Pointers, at home, joining us on this Monday evening. Thank you for stopping by. We're sure glad you're here. So, a few years ago, we started Camp Pencil Point as a safe and fun place for kids to go online to draw. We encourage kids of all the ages, from the ages of 3 to 30 to 300, to sketch along with us. We encourage parents to sketch along with their kids because creativity is always better when it's a shared experience. Speaking of sharing, sharing is caring. So please share Camp Pencil Point with your family and your friends. Share the website, share the videos, and share the love of drawing. While you're at it, please subscribe to this channel. Click on the bell icon above. This will notify you anytime we go live with a video or anytime we post something new. While you're at it, you can also check out camppencilpoint.com. We are updating our list of appearances. So we will be appearing at a city near you. And if we're appearing in a city not near you, you can check out the schedule and see when we go live because we're planning on going live from each and every appearance. So check out the schedule on camppencilpoint.com. There you go. So today is an Otter House activity. That means the lesson is more basic. It goes back to simple shapes. This gives beginners a chance to jump on board. It gives them a starting point to start drawing. If you're an experienced or intermediate artist, it gives you a chance to push your boundaries, explore new drawing styles, and flex those drawing muscles. So last week, I put a call out for suggestions on my Instagram. And while we're at it, follow Drew and follow me on Instagram. You never know when we'll have a call for suggestions. And you'll see what we did here. Maybe you'll be able to be featured in a future Camp Pencil Point video. But I put out a, a call for suggestions and I kept it really simple this time. I said, give us your favorite Disney character. We were overwhelmed by the response we got. We got a ton of suggestions and a lot of people very passionate about their Disney characters. So what we ended up doing, we wanted to try something different, something new. What we ended up doing was taking all those suggestions and we put them all on pieces of paper. We put them all in this bag, a Disney Halloween bag, appropriate. And we selected two of these names out of that bag. The two names and their suggestions will get the sketches that I do. So last week I did, uh, so the name I drew last week was Emily, not our Emily of the bagpipes, Emily Camp Pencil Pointer at home. Uh, Emily suggested the movie Lady and the Tramp. So I drew Lady from Lady and the Tramp. And here is uh, the sketch. And this is actually going to go out to Emily very soon. Emily, you're going to get this very soon. Uh, thank you for your suggestion and thank you for tuning in. Uh, those of you that participated in last week's video, here's a little snippet of it. Those of you that participated in last week's video and tried to draw along with me, you were challenged because you were very challenged because I was challenged. I was a very difficult character to draw. And uh, it took me a long time to 
figure out how to break it down for you, how to make it work for you. So hopefully it wasn't too difficult for you. Hopefully you had a good time. And most importantly, hopefully you learn something. Sometimes it's not about the finished art product that you create. It's about what you learn along the way because every artist has a better piece of art that is yet to be made. So hopefully you learned a lot and uh, took a lot away from that. Uh, it, it was almost like a good drawing workout. So hopefully you took a lot away from that. So let's move on to this week. Uh, the other name that I drew was Jane from, I think, Jane of the Box People, I believe. I don't know for sure. But I drew Jane's name, and her suggestion was Tinkerbell. And Tinkerbell is a great character to draw. So I'm going to draw a fairy-type character. Um, we're going to use simple shapes today. We're going to make her cute and adorable. We're going to really push the proportions of a cute and adorable character. I'm going to draw Tinkerbell with a little more a little more personality than I think a lot of Tinkerbell artwork features. So let's head over to Lexo Jr., the overhead camera. We're gonna draw Tinkerbell today using simple shapes for Jane of the Box People, possibly. All right, we're in Luxo Jr. view right now, the overhead camera, and I got my three guys. Let me move my three guys. And today we are going to draw a very cute Tinkerbell. And I haven't seen the latest uh, cartoons featuring Tink, but I know she has a, a group of friends and, and whatnot. Uh, but I remember Tink from Peter Pan and she was a, a fairly grouchy character. She was very pouty, very grouchy. And I think that is the character that kind of sticks with me the most. So I'm going to keep this very simple and break it down into very simple shapes. I have a square and then I'm going to have a, a triangle underneath. And the only other shape I'm going to probably go with is maybe a circle up top. And people will think that might be the bun. It's not. This will be the bun. So just so I get a rough idea of where she is and how she's sitting on the paper, I'm good with these rough shapes. So this is an Otter House activity. So I used everything fairly flat. If you want to take the next step and build volumetrically, you could take the square and make it into a cube. You could take the triangle and make it into a cone. Build it up volumetrically. Build on the planes of these objects and chisel away when you can. And let's see where that takes you. But back to my flat shapes because this is an Otter House activity. I'm going to add a couple of circles to indicate where my eye placement is. I'll have her looking straight at us full, full face. Just so you know what's going on, I'm going to chisel away at that square a little bit and I'm going to round up to form the top of her head. Now you see we have the body, so I'm going to actually kind of chisel away at the body. out of this triangle shape and a little triangle at the bottom. Now I'm going to give her a kind of grouchy gest gesture. So I'm just going to rough in two triangles. I'm not going to use the actual shape of the triangles, but you'll see how, how it goes in a bit. And the last thing I'm going to kind of rough in is a half circle because she does have like these poofy bangs. So I'm going to rough in two half circles for now. Um, you know, just because I'm going to rough in two half circles coming off of her back to form her wings and then another smaller set of half circles. And that's it for the rough shapes. What I'm going to do now is go in and give her a little expression and start noodling out 
what exactly I'm drawing. I'm giving her that grouchy stare. Now, this could just look angry if I don't give her a little attitude with her lips. So, just a, a simple circle, and actually almost like a triangle, can form a nice pout. And now that I'm looking at this, I think that jawline is a little too big, so I'm going to chisel away at it even more. And reduce it. Like I usually say, call audibles. Adjust my drawing as I progress. Kind of like weird half circles for the ears, just kind of roughed in. And I want to make sure the tops of those eyes kind of come through. So let me make sure everything's lined up, Get some finishing touches. And I think I am good to go. Let's throw a little bit of this indication down here for that dress so I know what's going on. And I think I'm okay. Maybe one more half circle right here just to give myself a guideline. So I didn't show you. I was working with my paper mate. I found Captain America. So Captain America is the pencil I drew with. I'm going to the Kiritaka. Kiritaka. I don't know how to pronounce it. You could uh, correct me in the comments below if you have to. Uh, extra fine pen this time. Uh, you could use any type of pen that you find. Um, uh, microns are not my favorite, but you could use those. Um, any kind of brush pen you find at a store works just fine, but the Kuretaka, these are really good pens, really soft nib, give you some good line work. And like I said, usually I don't work with a brush pen for the Otter House activities, but this one I really want to really push good line work. So I'm gonna start with that here. And I'm gonna deviate from these shapes a lot when I go into the final inking stage. Because I don't want, like, the, sh the simple shapes are just my guide. They don't need to show up in the final. It's kind of like the skeletal structure. You don't actually see your skeleton, but you know you have one. So I'm drawing her bangs. I'm going to turn the paper a little bit. And like I always say with hair, you want to go simply. You want to keep it simple. And mainly just draw the texture. You don't definitely do not want to draw every single strand of hair because it looks overworked and it's distracting from the rest of your art. Now, she has a part that I didn't indicate, but I could call the audible right now and throw the part in. I'm trying to push this pen to give me everything it's got. So I'm going from really thin lines to really thick lines and it really helps. It really helps define some of the shapes. All right, let's go into her face. The hair is looking pretty good to me, I think. I like the bun. Maybe I'll throw a little more texture into it periodically when I go back in. Okay, I gotta stop. <laughs> so let's work on the expression, the eyes. 
So when we're working on a cute character, a character meant to look cute, there are some exaggerations that you're allowed to take. And in this case, we enlarged her head and gave her big old eyes. And these are some examples of cute characteristics. that help establish the personality of this character. And I'm really going to push, she is a pretty, a dainty and pretty character, so I'm really going to push these eyelashes. And I'm going to do that by putting a dark line along the top edge and pulling out some eyelashes. As I was saying, I think those, I think people actually have eyelashes like this nowadays. I want the eyes contained within that head. So I want to make sure that the head actually wraps around those eyes. So right now the pencil line that I have it's really cutting close to that eye. It's not going to work, so I'm going to call the audible. And a little smudgy. I want to call the audible and pull in that cheek. And we're going to wrap down to the chin. We're going to do the same thing. This side of the cheek looks pretty good, so I'm going to kind of follow that line. No need to pull the audible. And now that we have the shape kind of down, I can draw the irises of the eyes. And I'm going to keep these pretty simple because she has very light eyes. So I'm going to play it up. And I might do something kind of fun with my markers when it comes to working her, her eyes. Now the nose I think is off-centered right now the way I drew it. So I'm calling the audible right now. And dropping in a simple shape for the nose. And going back to those lips, like I said, it's almost like just drawing the circle for the bottom lip. And drawing the triangle for the top lip gives her like that really good pouty look. I'm going to deviate from this half circle shape to make sure that that ear is working. And we'll go to the other side. Make sure that I am somewhat even with the other side, aware of what the other side is. So she doesn't have one ear way up in the, on top of her head and the other ear down low in her jaw. And she's looking really pretty good. So let's finish her up. I'll go into the neck, some shoulders. And her body type. Like I said, because she's a fairy, so she's got a light frame because she's got to fly around so she's very light and it has this kind of Flintstone looking dress that's looks kind of like that so simple shapes that wrap around I'm gonna go right into this leg and I am a as I say all the time I'm a big fan of the straight line that comes straight down like that and followed it by a curve line like that and I'm actually going to come right to the point to emphasize the cuteness factor that her joints are so small that they come almost to a point before they form that foot and we'll draw the little ballerina slipper that she has draw the back leg And we'll draw the arms. And I've been known to give girls Popeye arms, these big forearms. So I'm gonna go easy. And just like the legs, 
I'm going to come down to a point before I get to her hands. And the hands are just going to be simple indication. So you can get away with simple indication when things get really small. If I were to start noodling out exactly every detail, every finger in her arm, it would start to get too busy down there and she would lose that cuteness factor. So I keep it simple. We are going now to the wings. So the big part of her wings are first. And the bottom part of her wings is next. And now she's looking really good. I'm going to go and erase some of this. Because it got a little smudgy, got a little heavy and smudgy. So I'm going to pick up that pencil line and we can go into some colors now so I am gonna go first of all really dark a chart pack number eight cool gray eight I'm gonna go really dark around her this will make her really pop forward you can see it's really going on dark and like always I'm gonna be careful about when I come close to that ink line And like I always say, if you move quickly, methodically, you get a nice flat surface with your markers. So she's really starting to pop off now because of that dark gray behind her. So I'm going to put my dark gray away for now. I'm going to go with my chart pack blue. Because she does have blue eyes. And I'm going to put a little color in those wings.
I can see this blue marker has taken some abuse from being used so much over the course of these videos, but still kicking out some pretty good color. So makes me happy. Iconic Tinkerbell colors, green. So we're gonna throw a green dress in. This is a Prismacolor. I've used this before in the Owl, uh, Owl Session Part 2 for the background. I'm using it now for pink. And same darker green. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of darkness to give her a little bit of form and then blend it a little bit with the lighter green. Like I said, you don't want to try this with your Crayolas because they will they will all become a uniform gray color if you're not careful. So I said I mentioned a fun part. So we're going to do the fun part now. White pencil. This is a Prismacolor white pencil. And some areas where there's a highlight, I'm going to go in with a hard white. To give her a little bit of life. And she has these wings. I want to add a little bit of texture using this pencil. And in some areas, like under this eye where there's some bleed, I could clean it up a little bit. There's some bleed right here I'm going to clean up a little bit. We could define the edge of the wing, like so. We could define this edge of the wing, like so. And define this edge. So the white pencil helps us build texture and clean up as well. bit of bleed happening right here in her arm so I'm gonna clean that up too and she's looking pretty darn pouty so I'm gonna finish this off do a little signature below her wing and this will be for Jane who suggested this character on Facebook so Jane Tinkerbell is coming your way so there it is, draw your characters using a simple shapes. And if you wanna take the next step to the Octopus House in-depth activity, go from flat shapes to volumetric and see what you can create. But for now, let's see what characters you can do. There she is, guys. There is Tinkerbell in all her grumpy glory. She's pretty grouchy. There's a grouchy Tinkerbell. Love that character. So Jane, this is coming to you. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Thank you for tuning in. And Emily, thank you also for your suggestion. And thank you for tuning in. I'd like to see what you guys drew. If you drew along with me, take a picture of your sketch and post it to social media. Use this hashtag right here, hashtag Camp Pencil Point. All the artists, from Emily to Josh to Joe, that's me, to Chef Miker over there, we'll keep an eye out for it. And if we find it, we'll like it and comment on it. While you're at it, please follow Drew and follow me on social media. Here are the handles. You never know when we're going to put out the call for another suggestion. And maybe, just maybe, we'll use your suggestion in a future video. And if we do, you might be getting that sketch from that video. So, follow us on Instagram. While you're at it, please subscribe to Camp Pencil Point. Click on that bell icon up there. You'll be notified every time we go live or anytime we post a new video. You'll be notified on Thursday when we post a new video featuring Chef Miker, another guest appearance by Chef Miker. He's going to be drawing fish. I don't know what's up with Chef Miker and fish, but he's going to be drawing some fish. So please subscribe to Camp Pencil Point. Also, check out CampPencilPoint.com. We're going to be updating our appearance list. So we'll be appearing at a city near you and we'll be broadcasting live. So if you're not near that city, at least you can check out the live broadcast. So CampPencilPoint.com. Whew! Quite a day. Otter House activity. A lot going on. 
Thank you for stopping by, guys. It's a Monday night. We're really glad you decided to spend the evening with us. Draw for at least 20 minutes every day. This will keep your pencils dull, but it'll keep your skills sharp. So please draw for 20 minutes every day. Also, support the arts and support your favorite artists, especially on social media. If you follow them on social media, like their stuff, comment on their stuff, and share their artwork, but give proper credit. That's very important. Finally, most importantly, never stop creating and never stop inspiring. Until next time, keep drawing. Where's Drew? Is that Drew's bumper? Is my bumper? I want to do the bumper. My bumper. Okay. Um, so for today's bumper, I'm going to read everyone's suggestion or as many suggestions as I can really quickly that we got for this uh, challenge. Uh, Macy said Peter Pan. Katie said Chippendale and Peter Pan. Snow Sisters Boutique said Stitch. John said Rapunzel. And then he snuck in Sailor Moon. Not a Disney character. Jane, who we drew, said Tinkerbell. Lulu said Prince Eric and Max from Little Mermaid. Uh, Jason said Jafar, very good suggestion. Nikki, our friend Nikki said Hoops and Clawhauser. She met Hops, Judy Hops and Clawhauser, but it autocorrected, so she said Hoops and Clawhauser. I might just do Hoops and Clawhauser. Center Street Apparel said Baymax. Loopy Hoot, our friend Loopy Hoot. Mimi said Chippendale. Emily, who I drew, said uh, uh, Lady and Tramp and Black Cauldron. I wish I would have picked Black Cauldron. That would have been a whole lot easier. Uh, Lilo said Elliot on Mr. Toad. So that either means Elliot the dragon riding the Mr. Toad ride at Disneyland or Elliot actually sitting on Mr. Toad. I kind of like the latter. Summer gave us Pocahontas, uh, Snow White, and Cusco and Kronk. Very good suggestion. Jenna said Dumbo with big floppy ears. Jasmine said Ben Solo, good old Kylo Ren. Miguel, Doug from Up, and Gerald from Fi uh, Finding Dory. Heather said, hey, hey, from Moana. Casey said, power line from Goofy Movie. Fuel 11 Down gave us a whole bunch. Ariel, Moana, hey, hey, Nemo, Dory, and Becky from Finding Dory. Becky's a good one. Hooroo, Becky. Uh, BLH Stitches Company said, Marie. So we had a lot of good suggestions. Keep an eye out. Follow me on Instagram next time we give out a call for suggestions. Please give us your suggestion, and maybe you'll be featured on the next Camp Pencil Point video.